Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is power and authority in Capernaum. In Nazareth, Jesus launched his ministry with the words of Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. People are hungry for good news. Anointed ones carry the good news that people are hungry to hear. With these words, the Spirit of God took Jesus from his humble birth in Bethlehem to announce the arrival of the kingdom of God. He knows how to take you from your humble beginning and launch you into a radical ministry that will change the world you touch. I could have never imagined that when God called me to preach, one day people in over 160 countries would listen to the messages God gives me. As Jesus left Nazareth, we noted that there is a pattern to follow in the New Testament when launching a new ministry. You will have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You'll find your calling in the Bible. The devil will challenge the word the Lord gives you. You'll face a storm along the way. And one of the first persons you will meet on your journey will be demonized. We will see this pattern repeated all through the New Testament. Although Jesus was rejected in Nazareth, he left his hometown carrying the mantle of Elijah for provision, that is authority, and the mantle of Elisha for healing and deliverance, and that is power. Today, we join Jesus on his journey to Capernaum, where he first called disciples to follow him. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell us that his ministry began with the demonstration of the power and authority he carried in the synagogue at Capernaum. He modeled from the very beginning of his ministry the power and authority he wants all of his followers to release. Luke says he was teaching them in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and people were astonished at his teaching, for his words possessed authority. The first mark of Holy Spirit anointing on our life is that our words carry authority. The Bible says that the people were astonished, ekpleso, ekpleso. It means uh, to be utterly amazed or to become speechless at what has just been said or seen. People are astonished when they recognize that our words have the backing of heaven. We're not giving our opinions. We are releasing words from the Father. Those carry authority. That astonishes people. That is what makes the gospel attractive. Luke goes on to tell us, in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ah! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Luke chapter 4, verse 33 and 34. That demon spoke the truth. Demons understood that Jesus had come to destroy them. The Apostle John wrote in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Uh, the anointing Jesus carried to destroy the works of the devil is the same anointing his followers are called to carry. In my early years in missions, I left the work of dealing with demons in the hands of the locals. That was a big mistake. In those days, I'd not cast out a single demon and I had to learn the importance of the ministry of deliverance. Note with me that demons clearly know who Jesus is. It is strange that some people have difficulty accepting that Jesus is the Holy One of God. But demons don't. The demons said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God, Luke chapter 4. If you are struggling to believe that Jesus is the Son of God... I open your eyes to this truth today. Now, since there was a demonized man in the synagogue, 
I assure you there are demonized people present wherever you speak with authority. Uh, Jesus did not look for demons. Demons looked for Jesus. I don't look for demons, but demons look for me because of the authority that I carry. When Jesus rebuked the demon by saying, be silent and come out of him, the demon threw him down, threw the man down in their midst and came out of him, Luke chapter 4 and verse 34. Now, I just heard a demon laughing inside someone mocking me, saying, who is that man to be saying these things? I command that demon to be silent and to come out of the person you are tormenting, whoever you are, write to me and tell me your story. I was preaching in a country where the majority religion is another faith, and a man came to the meeting and he was listening to me. And during the break, he said to me, I'm afraid of you. He recognized there is an authority on my life and that his beliefs were being challenged. He said emphatically, I will not accept what you are saying. He turned around and he punched the wall in the back of the room. Well, for me, that was a clear manifestation of demonic activity. But within 15 minutes later, he got down on his knees in front of everyone in front of the room and accepted that Jesus paid for his sins on the cross. What an amazing story of power over the demonic. Now back in Capernaum, what happened to the man in the synagogue? When the demon had thrown the man down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. What was the reaction of the people? They were all amazed and said to one another, what is this word? For with authority and power, he commands unclean spirits, and they come out. Luke chapter 4 and verse 36. I was talking with a lady just recently who spoke with me about fear and anxiety that she was facing. And I just said in the name of Jesus, I command fear and anxiety to go. And the lady said to me, I felt fear and anxiety leaving me immediately. That is power and authority. It is important to know the difference between authority and power. When Jesus released healing or deliverance, when he did that with someone, when he healed or delivered, he did it with authority. But when Jesus performed a miracle, he did it with power. Healing is the removal of a disease or a demon and that requires authority. Miracles are the creation or recreation of a degenerated part like a disc, and that requires power. Jesus wants you to walk in the same power and authority that he walked in. On that day in Capernaum, the people were astonished at what they saw, and the reports about him went to every place in the surrounding region, Luke chapter 4, verse 37 and 38. When you move in power and authority, people will be drawn to your ministry and lives will be changed. Next week, we'll continue learning about walking in power and authority and the life that Jesus modeled. Now, let me take a few moments and pray for some things that we've heard and talked about in this uh, in this uh, message today, and whatever spiritual attack you're open, uh, undergoing right now, I open your eyes to see that we are indeed in a spiritual battle. I silence the voices that are in your head, the voices that are not the voice of God. How do you know the difference? Satan's voice will always release guilt and shame. Those are his greatest tools. If you are hearing a voice in your head that's speaking about how shameful you are and how guilty you are and creating a sense of fear, that is not the voice of your heavenly Father. Uh, your voice sounds a little bit different than Satan's. Your voice will sound like, this is what I should do. This is what I can't do. This is what I ought to do. Should, could, and oughts are often the voice of your own mind speaking to you. But the Father's voice sounds very different than those first two voices. It will sound like this, you can, I will help you, I love you, 
I have confidence in you. You can do what I'm asking you to do. That is the voice of the Father. Follow his voice. And we silence all other voices that are in your life right now so that you hear the Father's voice and you respond in a loving way as he responds lovingly to you. I take authority over the voices that you are, are hearing. I command disease uh, to be healed in your body. I, if you have a degenerative disease of some kind and you need a recreated mir recreative miracle, I release that to you today. Perhaps you have a ruptured disc that needs to be restored. Or maybe you have a missing part, cartilage that's torn and gone, and you have tremendous grinding in your knees or in your shoulder or some other part in your neck, and you actually need God to replace something you've had metal implanted into your body and many people who've had metal planted in their, implanted into their body have successful surgery but if for some reason your surgery was not successful if your surgery left you in as much pain as before and with little or no more improved mobility we just want to speak over whatever part in your body needed a rod put in. And I command that rod to dissolve out of your body in Jesus' name and for a new bone to instantly be put in your body. If you uh, feel something going on in a part of your body right now, if you could feel that metal formally, just try to feel it again and you'll see that that metal has gone and God has released to you a recreative miracle uh, so that you're no longer in pain. Get up and move about and do something that you couldn't do. Test yourself. And boy, give thanks to God that he is working in your life. What a great God we serve and what a blessing to share this message with you tonight on power and authority in Capernaum. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with Living Hope.